Hello and welcome back everyone. This is episode 4. I'm terribly sorry it has been so long since my previous video. I've had quite a lot going on in my uh, personal life. Had to have some wisdom teeth removed and the bigger barnstormer is uh, misbehaving. But thankfully for now she's running quite nicely. For anyone curious, that is a 1956 Corvette that has vexed me with its carburetor woes for the last couple of months. But finally, I think we're on the track to get it right now. So we're going to get straight stuck into this video. You'll see that we've adjusted how we're going to do these from now on. This will be the episode I'm sure known as the terrible camera angle episode. I'm going to change that and move the camera to behind me so you can see over my shoulder. But for right now, you're just going to have to grin and bear it. So here, we're going to score the panel lines. And as I mentioned before, the Ravel A10 has raised panel lines on it on the 1 to 48 kit. I actually don't know if they do a different scale. I'm assuming they do a 1 to 70 second. Uh, but the 1 to 48 has raised panel lines all over the place, which is interesting. And I'm sure I've mentioned before it's entertaining because the aft fuselage has actually really well done rivets. But the front fuselage, forward fuselage, just it it's honestly is terrible. There's the panel lines are all raised. It's not realistic at all to how the aircraft would look. Some of you are gonna be out there saying I'm rivet counting. You know what? It it's it's the way it's gonna look best, honestly, is if I go ahead and score these panel lines down. It doesn't take that much effort. Uh, so we're going to score the panel lines down, and then with these kits, you want to make sure that you weight the nose. The Ravel A10, and I honestly found this out through experience, is a very tail-heavy kit. And my previous experience being when I was in probably middle school and built one of these things, and of course it would not sit in the tricycle configuration without some extra support in the tail. So to get around that, we're just going to take some lead fishing weights. I think I picked these up at a sporting goods store. And we're going to go ahead and put those in the nose. You're going to use a little bit of super glue to do that. And you want to make sure you don't go too crazy. The A10 kit does have some pieces that need to go in the nose. I believe I ended up trimming up part of one of the gun pieces. I don't remember which, but it is not visible from the external of the kit. Additionally, you want to make sure that the weights don't hit each other when you close the, close the fuselage together. So here we're going to go ahead and paint the inside around the cockpit area, or sorry, no, not the cockpit area, the nose landing gear area, nose landing gear bay. We're going to go ahead and paint that white. Uh, most military aircraft of the US military have white landing gear bays, at least they do now. Previously, and I believe this kit's instruction goes for a historical time in the A-10's life, it'll tell you to do it a different color. I went with white. We're going to go for a modern, more modern look with this aircraft and just take care of it there. Again, I, I, I hate these glue bottles as much as I love them, and you can see me fighting it here. It takes a long time to get the glue flowing, but once it does, you have excellent control over it. It's easy to not put too much down, which will make your day a very problematic one indeed. If you do end up putting too much glue down, just go ahead and wipe it off immediately as best you can, and then try to put a more controlled layer down once you have the excess cleaned up. So here, uh, you saw me install the cockpit, kind of. It's a little off screen right now, but the, you saw me install the cockpit in the starboard fuselage half. You want to go ahead and give this one a good amount of time to tack up and dry. I went ahead and closed the fuselage, but I was very careful that I kept the cockpit in the correct orientation. It's not as easy to support once the fuselage is closed, and with it open you get the the luxury of being able to correct it as it sets on one side, and then you can just bond it to the other as you close the rest of the fuselage. I went ahead and closed the fuselage and then glued it underneath. I don't typically advise doing it this way. This is a, Either way you do it, you're going to have to have a lot of patience with this kit uh, for this step, and it's a very good step to end a day with. While, uh, while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and tape the fuselage together once we've put our bead of glue around the outside. Just holds it together while it sets. 
be very careful of the adjoining line between the port and starboard sides. We want to make sure that it is as even as possible. Otherwise, we're going to do a lot of sanding and filing and dropping a lot of putty and getting that line correct in the, in the future episodes. And if you're building this kit, your future time as well. So for mine, I'll go ahead and spoil it for you right now. It's going to require a good amount. It's close, but it's not as close as I would have liked. So we'll be covering that later. While the fuselage is drying, it's supported by the tape. It's a really good time to test fit the wings. The wings on this kit are sturdy. They are beefy. They have the overlapping tabs in the middle. No matter, really, as long as you put sufficient glue down, those things are not going to go anywhere. You also want to check how well the wing roots are going to fit up against the fuselage lines. Some kits, this kit's not one of them particularly, but kits like your old World War II fighter aircraft, they have flares coming out the side of the fuselage to mate with the wing root. And that, uh, that curve and that line really catches your eye, especially if something's wrong with it. So, and there's a little bit of one on the A-10. It's not, not as prom prominent or pronounced as some of the old piston warbirds, but on this one there are some. So we went ahead and checked that, and they're not terrible. They're not bad at all. So here we're going to glue the engine nacelle section in. I did have some issues. It looks like one of the, the main piece of the nacelle structure is a little bit warped. Uh, the back, the aft portion of it is curved up very slightly. So I went ahead and glued in the forward section only for now, and I left that set up nicely. In the future, or in, the, in a little bit, you will see that I glue the aft portion down later and tape it down, and that's just so that I've got a good support in the front end, and once we get to the back end, the front end's dried, it's not going to move, and I can kind of stretch it back down a little bit. It didn't require much, really. Now we're going to attach the wings. From here on, most of our finicky details have been taken care of at this point, other than the armaments, which will be extensive later. So we're going to progress fairly rapidly here. So we've got both wings in. As I said, they're very sturdy. They're very beefy once they're set up. There's plenty of contact area. I'm not too worried about, about them. Uh, you will see me support them. I had some tricky time figuring out where to support them. I wanted it to give it a nice symmetric look. It's it's easy to get too carried away with these thinking that they're going to lock in and you come out to find that one of your wings is a little bit higher than the other. So it's something to pay attention to while you can. I, I believe I supported these with two paint, uh, two little paint cans you can see there on the video uh, or see right here on the video and uh, I believe I put them underneath the mid point of the wing, so right where the landing gear are, maybe a little bit further inboard. And that was just to help support those wings in the correct position. I wanted to make sure they were even. So you'll see me support it, give it a couple glances to make sure it's right. In the meantime, while it's supported, it's not really going to go anywhere. So I went ahead and attached the empennage horizontal stabilizers as well. These are as well, th these are also very beefy. Plenty of contact area for the glue. They're not going to go anywhere once they're bonded in. They are very finicky to align, however. So again, you're going to want to support this. This is also a, a good step to stop for a day once you've attached these. You just got to have to be very patient with them. If you do get some misalignment, that blue painter's tape you can see me using, that stuff is excellent for this task. Um, go ahead and get it aligned as best as you can and support it with painter's tape. I don't, I didn't have to do that on mine, but your, your mileage may vary if you if you will. So once we've got the empennage attached, we've got to decide what to do next. There's so much in this kit to do. There's a ton of bombs, missiles, fuel tanks. There's all the flight, the, uh, the stores underneath the, the racks underneath the wings to hold those associated. We've got all the landing gear still to do. There's speed brakes and some portions of the wing, wings that we have not done yet. So here, so here you're going to see me, as I said earlier, attach the aft end of the engine nacelles once we can get the glue to behave. And it, it's very difficult to just sit here and talk and watch yourself <laughs> build these things. 
So we've got ahead and got the Aptus latch tucked down now. We're going to have to tape it. I'm using the very thin um, hobby, I don't remember what brand it is, but it's one of the modeling companies that make this very thin masking tape. It's very easy to stretch it till the point it breaks, so you want to be very careful when you're using it. Don't go too crazy trying to pull it tight or you're, you're just going to snap it. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is the speed brakes. Speed brakes on this aircraft were actually quite funny to attach. Uh, one side went in perfectly and was perfectly aligned. It had a good amount of friction on it, so it wasn't going to move as long as I didn't disturb the model. The other side was the complete opposite. It was quite a lot looser. It was difficult to get aligned, and I ended up having to tape it, as you can see on the starboard side there. Uh, it, it ended up curing and drying just fine. I didn't budget or uh, bump it while it was setting up, but it was something I was watching out for, so I was prepared for it as well. Uh, as I said before, you can see all those bombs or bomb halves that I've taken up and put down on the left. A lot of my kits, I, I frequently build piston engine World War II aircraft, so bombs are not a super detailed portion of my build historically. The A-10 is a completely different animal because it store, has so many stores on the wings that you can build the kit with and it's such an integral part of the kit itself and displaying it that with the A-10 you really want to take your time. You want to get it right, you want to make sure that you've got plenty of detail in the bombs and the bombs are Again, it's the same as building the fuselage, essentially. You want to make sure that the lines are as good as you can get them on the bomb casing halves. You don't want uh, to be sitting there sanding bomb halves forever. The fuel tank, the centerline drop tank, is actually one of those as well, because it's fairly massive on the A-10. At least I believe it's a centerline drop tank. I could be wrong. I'm going to have to look that up before I start sounding like a fool. But it's, it's a very long piece. It's probably about four and a half or five inches long. We want to make sure that we get those lines as accurately as possible. You know, true to, true to form on some of these kits, they didn't spend a lot of attention on how to lock those pieces together. So there's only a couple of tabs for that entire length to align them. So here, this is one of those cases where you want to be extremely careful with a, with a knife. Um, I would like to point out that my fingers are below the level of the knife for all of that. Uh, kids, if you're watching, be extremely careful if you're using one of those hobby blades. They are very sharp. I can attest to it. Don't cut towards yourself. Don't cut towards your fingers. You're going to have a bad time. And I can tell you from experience, I've stabbed myself with these more times than I would care to mention. Fortunately, I haven't done any real damage, but just, just don't even give yourself the opportunity. So again, this is very tedious work. We've got a ton of these things. So each one, we're gonna take off the burrs, we're gonna put the glue, a layer of glue around the whole thing, and then we're gonna tape it down. And rinse and repeat all the time. So this is pretty self-explanatory stuff. And while we get finished, we're, I think this part is gonna conclude most of the overall assembly. And we, we didn't do the landing gear in this part, but uh, we, we did the nose and we are going to end right before we start priming the structure. So this, this kit is, as I said, this kit's not for me, but I'm also using it to try out a couple of new techniques regarding the paint and the decals. So when you airbrush a kit, you end up with a relatively rough matte surface uh, well, depending on your color, of course. But you end up with a relatively rough surface, especially for military aircraft like this one. And that creates a problem in bonding your decals, which are just the water slide decals that all of these kits have. And so they can be a pain to transfer over. So for this kit, we're going to prime, which you'll see in the next episode. And then we're going to paint it, and then we're going to gloss coat it, which should help those decals to stick. But for now, we're going to end with assembling the landing gear. Or, sorry, no, not the landing gear, the wheels. We're going to wrap up showing the wheels. This video is going to be a lot shorter than previous ones, and I think that's the way I'm going to try and keep this. I prefer this method of speaking or doing a voiceover rather than trying to, trying to just 
narrate the whole thing for a couple of hours that just gets successes and nobody really wants to listen to that so we're wrapping it up here and we're going to end as i said with putting the wheels together i'd like to say thank you to everyone for watching and in the next episode as i previously mentioned we're going to be priming this thing this video is a lot shorter we're only at around 15 minutes so i hope you all enjoyed it thank you and stay tuned for next time